Hello, friend, friends. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel for those of you who are new. So I've always like kind of exposed myself on my YouTube channel just because I think it's funny and I like I just like being you know showing you guys that it's okay to be the like, ho. Oh. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. But like you know, it's okay to be who you are. Nevertheless, in today's new video, I thought I would answer uncomfortable questions that you all have for me. Some of them were like rather like interesting questions to say the least and others were just kind of like really like why? But they were asked. Nevertheless, if you all want to see me answer these questions, keep on watching. So I put out like a poll or like one of those questionnaire thingies on Instagram and a lot of you actually answered, which was pretty surprising. Some people like DM me and they're like, hey, I can't ask a question just because it's over the max. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm gonna have to use my glasses for this. I'm sorry. Also, I want to apologize like for like being MIA these past few weeks. It's been super busy dealing with my job and you know, just being busy in general. Um, so I do apologize for that. I am going to try to get back onto this regular schedule. Definitely has been difficult, but I promise I will get back on this regular schedule, okay? Anyways, jumping into it. So the first question is from one of my friends and it says, do you love Zoe? Obviously, Zoe, I do love you. I mean, I hang out with you all the time. So I do love you. The next question is, why is your BFF so hot? And I'm sure you can imagine who is that, who that is from. Um, I mean, she is kind of hot. She's like, just like a white girl hot, like a, you know, like you know, she, she has her moments to say the least. Anyways, I don't think she's that hot, but like, I'm just joking, don't come for me, Lauren, I love you. Um, next question is, <laughs> biggest you're, you've taken or had, go. Um, the biggest that I've had of, I don't know if I can, I should admit this on camera, but I guess I will. Um, <laughs> has been 10, 10 inches. And I, oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, one of my friends, Kyla, why you built like that? I know I built like a refrigerator. <laughs> Next question. What's your kink now? <laughs> By the way, when I get uncomfortable, I get really, I start laughing a lot. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I shouldn't probably say that. Um, um, uh, I guess I, the only thing I'll say is that I like to be choked. I guess that's like a kink, okay? Um, next, these are by the way, like this, this girl asks a lot of questions. Um, what's your body count? Now, I'm not gonna say the number on camera and I'm not gonna admit the number, but let's just say it's not in the single digits anymore. Okay, anyways, what's your turn on or what's a turn on? Oh, a tr actually, it's a good question. So like a turn on for me is like when the guy is super polite, super like, you know, like he's just bigger than I am. I'm like a pretty big guy already. Like, yes, I am fat, I am a refrigerator. But I definitely think that like when a guy is like taller than me and like more built and has muscles and like, oh yes, sorry, like more beefy, I guess you could say. That's a turn on, that's for sure. Um, next question is, what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you? That's an interesting one. That's not so much uncomfortable. That's just like, just interesting. Um, weirdest thing that's happened to me. I don't even know. I guess, oh, that's hard. Um, I guess the weirdest thing that's happened to me has been like when I went out and I got into like a random vehicle or like a pre person's vehicle and ended up being like the best time of my life and the be best experience of my life. I think that's like the weirdest thing because I wasn't expecting that. Um, but that's like a hard question. That's like a loaded question. I would have to think about that. I might answer the answer that one months later because who knows. But like, I would probably say like, you know, when I got into, like I went out and we got into like this random Uber car and we ended up going to after party, ended up being like the most fun I've ever had in my, you know, party, you know, career or whatever. So I think that would say that. Um, worst blackout story. I feel like you guys already know the blackout story it was when I like, you know, passed out in the bar. That was probably the worst blackout story I've ever had. It was definitely not fun. I did not like that, you know, yeah. Um, next question. So I'm going through these pretty fast. I feel like a lot of these are very like, just super quick answers. I don't know, I like to go fast. Really bitch. Anyways, uh, next question is your favorite person. I don't think I have a favorite person. Well, 
I guess I would say my mom is my favorite person only because like I go to her for like everything and I call her for everything and then probably after that would probably be my sister and then like my bestie um and then like just like all my friends after that but like uh, other than them like I think my mom is like my number one favorite person just because like while yes her and I are you like a married couple like she is my ride or die she's the one who's always been there for me so that's just me um then okay so these two questions are kind of similar like they're back to back and they're kind of similar uh one of them is your v card losing story and then the next one is how was your first time so i guess i always like to say i had two first times the first time like the very first time didn't go in and it was on a football field i knew this guy because he dated somebody else in my band and i trusted him and you know i knew who he was or whatever but it was on in the middle of football fields so that was interesting and then the second time was you guys already know this one like the true first time was when i uh lost my virginity to the guy like my ex who uh we had relations i guess you could say in my hotel in his hotel room uh at state so it wasn't that bad it was actually pretty it was pretty hot like hot and steamy okay the next question is and this is like i feel like kind of like an attack on me but you know what we're not gonna we're not gonna read into it anyways um the question says what made you drawn to materialistic things when there's so much poverty poverty in the world and you know that's a really good question and the reason why i say that is because i personally have struggled with this personally like i internally and morality wise have struggled with this um you know i'm obviously not rich i you know i struggle with my own finances i have like eight dollars on my bank account right now um i'm just being honest with you guys but i think the reason why i was so drawn like first when i was younger um uh, drawn to such materialistic things was because of the fact that i had this mentality that in order to have popularity and in order to you know be liked by people you had to have money you had to have status you had to have this that that the but in reality, like that's that's just not the truth. Like, you know, you have to be true to yourself, you have to love yourself, and you have to just put your best foot forward. You should never let, like, you know, whether you have a Louis Vuitton bag, you determine whether or not, like, it, it, people like you or not. Um, so I, I think my outlook has changed definitely a, a lot since, like, you know, I was younger. But, you know, at the time, I, I the reason why I had that mindset was because of the fact that, like, I wanted to be liked so much. And I have that like want to be liked. And as I've gotten older, I realized that like, it's unrealistic to put up a facade that you have money when in reality you don't. And it's just, it's unrealistic. It's hard to keep up with. And it's just more meant, that's harder on your mental health than anything else in the world. So um, I think that's the, that would be my answer is just, you know, I thought it would make people like me now, like better or more. Um, now I appreciate it for its art. Now I appreciate it for what it is. But, you know, during that, when I was younger, you know, buying all these, like, you know, LV monogram plastic shit, um, it, it was different. It was just, you know, I had a different mindset then. Anyways, next question. What is your biggest fear now that you graduated from college? Now, these are very deep questions, might I just say. Anyways, um... I guess, you know, I always say one of my biggest fears, and this is, I've always said this since I was younger, has been failure. And um, the reason why I say failure is because I have, I want to be successful. I want to be something. I want to be somebody. And not even so much somebody, but I want to make something for my life. I want to leave a legacy behind. Um, I want to be able to pay off my parents' house. I want to be able to, like, you know, pay a house for my parents, for my siblings, for a car for my siblings. And I think for me, being a failure is is so much worse than not even trying at the end of the day you know not or uh, not even so much that like you know it's just like i don't know i just, i guess being beating me mediocre and being a failure i would say would probably be my biggest fear just because i know i'm meant for more and i like that might sort of not sound narcissistic to some but i know i'm meant for more and i know that i can change the world that's just my idealist that's just my ideology anyways last and final question do you regret studying music that one mm. so let me tell you a little story when i got into college i loved music i, I fell in love with it. i still love music I, it's always been a passion of mine 
but I think over the years, it's just like, you know, it's beating into your head that you're not good enough, that you're, you're never going to amount to anything, that, you know, nothing's ever going to happen for you. And I think that's the problem with a lot of the music departments is that they'll tell you, especially, especially UNT, mind you, they'll tell you that you're not good enough. They'll tell you that, like, you know, you're not going to amount to anything in order to get the results that they want. And, like, at least that was my experience in, you know, at UNT. It was one of the hardest and like mentally most mentally challenging you know experiences at UNT and I think while I regret like you know not getting the experience of business experiences I am going to more of a business side of it of you know the uh, uh, more of a business route I don't I don't regret the experience that I had if that makes sense because that experience made me stronger it made me who I am today but also it made me more determined to reach goals I never thought I would reach. So I would say, no, I don't regret that degree. It's, I didn't learn the marketing. I didn't learn the business aspect of that I wanted, but at the end of the day, I learned the determination and the dedication it takes to get what you want in this world. Nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed today's new video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and let me know what you guys wanna see next i love you guys don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button as well as that bell icon so you know when i upload brand new videos and i will see you all in the next one bye y'all